Hey there, Internet. This video is for folks who want to do testing on Arduino projects who don't really know much about C++ and are perplexed by strange errors like this. Program error with blah, blah, blah code. So uh, just really quickly, I have an existing project with a whole bunch of crap in it, and I wanted to do some testing. I have some tests that had been working. But when I tried to test this library called Yasm, which is yet another state machine, the, the major issue that I had was I was getting I was getting this error and I couldn't figure out what to do with it. And then I was trying to figure out, well, how do you debug this? And I also couldn't figure that out. So the first thing uh, I just want to describe is this error. Now, this error can mean like a million different things. I think it decodes to some kind of like access violation error or something like that. If I run the program, so the, the program actually runs, it doesn't actually throw an exception or anything. But for some reason, when you run it as a test, it, it, it creates this thing, right? So then the next question that you might have is like, well, how do I debug it? And just, to, it, there's some real weirdness with uh, platform IO. So I have all these different environments for a variety of reasons. My test environment's all the way down here. Now, if I go into the debugging tab and I don't do anything different and I click debug, the debug tab is always going to default to the first, the first thing here, right? So right now I have a default thing, but normally it would be this. This would be your first environment and it, it will try to debug this thing. And this thing is Arduino code and it can't, it can't do that, right? So in your platform IO, right, I've got all this crap in that platform IO, what you need to do, uh, if you want to run it on your local machine, number one, you got to specify the platform as native. Now you might think that specifying the platform as windows x86 is the right thing to do. But for me, I guess the way I set this up, uh, I'm using min GW and G plus plus. And so it's gotta be native. It can't be, um, you know, it can't be windows x86. So, that, that seems obvious, but that's not actually right. Um, the next thing is you might have to include these, uh, these build flags for static uh, just because of the environment. So that's another thing that you might want to do. And there's two ways to do that. You can do an, an extra scripts thing, or you can do it as a build flag. All right, the next thing is you have to specify the build type as debug, okay? And then you have to specify the debug test that you want to run and that test is specified by the directory name it's not this that's not the file but it's the directory name so if we look at my directories real quick i have a directory here called uh test async bounce fsm and then here's the file itself right so uh so anyway so you got to specify the test that you want to debug but none of this is going to work the way it is because, again, it's always going to default to that first thing. So what you have to do is up here in Platform I.O., not in any of your environments, but in Platform I.O., you have to specify the default environment. And then this is the environment that when you click on the Run and Debug tab that it's going to use. Okay? All right, so that's that. So now you go to Run and Debug, and you can click Start. And then what you'll find is that you'll get a debugging session. So we can go ahead and step through this. It's going to go do the Unity stuff. It's going to print a line out. Now it's going to run our test. And then we're going to get in here. It's going to uh, it's going to do this stuff. And then boom. So now we're in Fake It. And essentially what this is telling you is that Fake It has detected that there's an unhandled, unmocked exception somewhere. And that's actually where you're getting that, um, that's where you're getting that error code 322, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So that's your clue <clears throat> that there's some unhandled mock. And in my case, it happens to be the call for, for milliseconds. So what you have to do is you have to mock that interface, right? So for milliseconds, it's pretty easy. And this was really confusing for me because I thought the library that I was using, let me just show you that real quick. This yet another state machine library. As I just kind of like glanced through the code and I'm like, oh, this is just, it's just an object. It's not doing anything Arduino specific. 
but it is it's 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 trying to get the current time so back here in our code if i uncomment this line here what we're going to do is this this it's going to detect any calls to this function called milliseconds and then it's going to return a value which is which is just a monotonically in, in, incrementing value called the time so it'll just do one two three four five etc so every time i call async bounce dot run we're going to end up in here it's going to call milliseconds and set this last time variable and then everything will work the way it's expected hopefully that saves somebody some time i know this is a, a uh there's a bunch of code in here that probably doesn't make any sense but uh, the, the main thrust of this whole thing is, is how do you diagnose that uh, particular problem? Um, the other thing I'll just point out really quickly is uh, you can run this. Let me comment this back in. You can run this test and you won't see any, uh, any standard output. So again, the test should fail. And there we go, we got our bizarre error and we have no standard output. Um, if you wanna have standard output, you just do one V verbose flag. So now let's uncomment this. This will actually run this time. And we should get standard output and it's kind of buried and you get all these exception weird warning, compiler warnings and stuff. But uh, here's our output, right? So this is all the stuff that we're looking for in our test. Um, if you, if you're having more issues, like for instance, y y y the include paths are messed up or, you know, things aren't working with respect to, you can't find a library and that kind of stuff. If you specify three verbose flags, uh, you'll get much better. Uh, wow. It didn't rebuild anything. Let me do that again. Uh, is this, is this going to make it rebuild? I doubt it. I don't know any, I'm, I'm just not a C plus plus guy. All right, here, here's what it's actually doing. So this is like all the stuff that G G plus plus is going to get. And, uh, you can see all the paths here. One other thing I just want to note. So when you're in this environment, um, if you want to include stuff from your project, you can, you can pull in headers but it will not compile the CPP file, right? So, so if you can, you can make header only stuff and then you can run that in a test environment. If you have things that aren't header only, you, one of the things that you can do is if, if they're shared between your test environment and your actual Arduino project, you can put those things into the lib directory. And so you can hear, you can see here, I have, uh, something for logging and I have a C plus a CPP file. This, this file will actually get compiled. And I just had to tell it the relative path to, to this path to get back to the other stuff that it needs. And then you can also say, it, you, you can, you can say if we're testing, don't do this. Right. Um, but if you have something that's native only, what, what I've done is you can, you can create another directory that in this case, I call it test lib and, uh, I have a test helper. And what this does is a bunch of static initialization that I need to do that I don't want to include in all of my tests. So the way that this works in your platform IO file is you can specify that with the, this libs extra ders. So when you add this to libs extra ders, what you'll see is uh, this will only, uh, get compiled for this environment, which is your test environment, which runs native code. So this only runs for my tests and my static initialization for a bunch of my crap. Uh, this doesn't, this, this doesn't get included with any of the Arduino builds. So if you, if you want, you can do this. And then in your, uh, then in your test, you can include that test, that test helper library, which does all your initialization. And then you can do that across, uh, you know, your multiple tests. So you don't have to have all that initialization code in all your tests. So that's just another little tip. 
that I figured out that wasn't it wasn't really clear. Again, this is for people who are not C++ people who maybe know other languages and are confused by all this madness of the build system. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that saved somebody some time. I know this was very painful for me to try to figure out. The documentation's not great for, like, it, it has a lot of expectations that you already know how to do all this stuff or you know how this stuff works. So. Anyway, uh, if you have any improvements or if I screwed anything up, leave a comment down below and uh, see ya.